And one. All right. Hey guys, what's up? It's uh, Zach Trowbridge with Allstate Training uh, here with a special guest on uh, on our YouTube today. Uh, so I've got Chris Edmonds with me. Chris has been my coach uh, since 2016 now. So it's very long time. Uh, so, and, and he's been with me through a lot of stuff. He's been with me through uh, the recovery from a head injury and from multiple surgeries related to my Crohn's and, and competing and a ton of stuff. Um, so I wanted to get Chris on, I wanted to talk to him a little bit about, um, not just what he does now, but kind of how he got to where, where he is, what's influenced him, um, professionally and what kind of took, took a kid in the weight room for the first time and, and allowed him to transition into having it basically be his, not only his, his full-time career, but his full-time hobby too, um, so yeah, Chris, anything else you want to kind of add? Uh, oh, I should say, uh, so Chris, uh, I got to, to know Chris through Mountain Dog Diet. Uh, he, he works under John Meadows, uh, and, and right now is the lead coach for that company. Uh, also has a YouTube channel, Chris Edmonds TV. Uh, I will throw a link to that channel in the comment or the description below. If you guys want to check it out, I'd highly recommend it. A uh, ton of good stuff that goes up, what, two, three, four days a week sometimes on there right now. Yep. Um, yeah. So anything else you want to add? No, I mean, I think you pretty much covered it, man. Um, I think the only part you may have left out for people to know, I worked as a in-person trainer for let's see, over a decade. Um, and that was in a large commercial gold's gym where I was a fitness manager there. Um, and then I transitioned into building a personal training, uh, essentially, program inside of a physical therapy facility um locally and then i co-owned a studio like personal training gym that catered more towards high-end clientele um so outside of that that's <laughs> yeah. a long windy career to get me to essentially any turning interning for john and then starting with him as a full-time coach and then eventually him promoting to me to the lead coach uh, and then now, ever since he's been deceased, I've been running the training, programming, nutrition uh, side of the website. <clears throat> yeah, perfect. Uh, so I feel like it's probably a good place to start. So I would have to go out of limb and and guess that John's probably one of the the biggest influences on you professionally, personally. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know, so so John Meadows, uh, he founded a, a website, mountaindogdiet.com. Uh, first started just as a as a, an, an amateur bodybuilder who would give good advice on the internet, uh, yeah. which for a long time was a very rare thing. Uh, and Mountain Dog One was just his handle. Yep. So, and then that sort of became his brand after a while because he became one of the few people actually giving good advice on training and nutrition and and for you know because he he obviously is in the competitive bodybuilding side too for people who are going to use performance enhancing drugs, actually giving real advice instead of just the go big or go home sort of stuff that that you would tend to find, especially on the internet at that point, which was what, late 90s? Yeah. For yep. him. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's how did you get into even starting with John? Because you he coached you first, right? Yeah. So it's a great story. Um, my buddies and I would just go into the gym and beat the fuck out of each other. Literally, and there's no other way to describe it. It yeah. was four of us, and we would just go toe-to-toe -to -toe every session. And in hindsight, it was like way too much volume, way too much intensity. But when you get four meatheads beating the piss out of each other, like – it, it, it actually worked out perfect, right? Uh, one one of the one of my buddies he ended up going back to school, so he left. He moved to Maryland. the uh, The leader of our ring, so to speak, uh, was an All American Ohio State wrestler. Um, he actually transitioned jobs and moved out west, so it just left my buddy Ryan and I. And when they when they left, we both looked at each other, and I'm like, "Is your body beat the shit like mine?" And he's like, "Yeah," and we were both like big avid T nation readers at the time. This was back when before in my mind, it now has transitioned to a whole other world. This was back mm -hmm. when it was like great information on there. And I'd stumbled across a John Meadows and Dave Tate chest and shoulder workout. And like I, I read it and studied it and it just made sense. So I told Ryan, I said, man, let, on Tuesday, let's, let's get after this session. 
And we did, and it was great. And it just so happened that, like, the next day, they posted a leg day that they had done together. Uh, so we are like, hey, well, let's just keep riding this train. So yeah. after we did that leg session, and both the chest shoulder and the leg days were so different from what we were used to doing um, in terms of structure set up and, like, exercise selection. I looked at it, and I was like, man, this shit just makes sense, and it doesn't – I don't feel beat up, right? And he's like, no, neither do I. So I reached out to John, and I said – you know, I, I definitely want to do your program at this time. And now this is laughable because most people don't realize this is this is back when he worked at Chase and wasn't known, right? So for a 12-week training program, it was $600. So I always laugh when I hear people complain about our program prices now <laughs> because it was triple and I didn't fucking right, believe yeah. it. So he sent me um, a questionnaire to fill out and he was like, just do it as detailed as possible. And I don't remember my exact words, but essentially I wrote on there like, do not hold back. Fucking punish me. I am used to hard training. Like, there is nothing I'll bat an eye at. And he must have read the questionnaire that night, and he and he just simply responded back. And as you know, John, very man of few words on the internet, on, on email or text message, he uh, said, I think we're going to get along really well. So fast forward like a week, he put the program together, and he just titled it, the email, 12 Weeks of Pain and Suffering for Chris the Insane. And that kind of just like stuck, right? So... I kind of laughed and like him and I would go back and forth. Like he was like, Hey, keep me updated how it goes. Because what he used to do was every two weeks, he would send you out a, the next weeks of training. So it was like a week, every Sunday, it would just come to you in an email. Yeah. And God knows how long that took him to do. Cause I think at the time he told me he had like right short of like 250 clients he was doing training programs for. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he's like all Sunday in front of my computer, just sending out training and you know, it just kind of grew and grew. And then he started getting more coverage on T Nation. So, like, I don't know if, if you were a member of those forums, but I mean, that was like the yeah. lifeline to me. Like, he would, he would post an article and then people would just, we would go to read the, the form content more than the actual article a lot of times. Yeah. So, he, him and Dave posted a leg workout and someone put on there that I think looked that challenging. So, John's simple response was, well, if it looks that simple, why don't you come train with us? And the guy was like, no, man, it's a long drive. Like, it's not really worth it. So my name on there wasn't like Chris Edmonds, right? Like my handle uh, or username. So I commented right below that dude. I was like, if you're inviting people, I'm down. Just say the word. So <laughs> he said, what are you doing Friday? <laughs> nice. And I was like, I'm fucking there. So I canceled all my training clients for the day, <laughs> for the next day. Because this was like yeah. a Wednesday. Yeah. And he was like, come up on Friday, we'll train legs on Saturday. I was like, okay, cool. So I canceled all my appointments for Friday. My buddy and I jumped in a car. We drove to Ohio, which for us is about roughly six hours. Mm. We drove through a derecho, like <laughs> trees were melting on the side of the highway. Nice. Yes. And he looked at me and he goes, what do you want to do? I said, well, fuck, we can't turn around now. We're almost there. <laughs> so we get we get to, we get into Ohio and... He was like, just show up at Elite FTS. He like, sent me the address. This was the old S4 building um, that's in the middle of this neighborhood. And he's like, when you see the train tracks, go across the train tracks and pull to a bar bar fencing parking lot. It's a big metal building. So, okay, cool. So, we get there like 30 minutes early and we're just like hanging out. One of the other guys that comes in, Ryan, who's going to train with us, was like, just kind of giving us some pointer, so to speak. He's like, whatever you do, don't stare at John's legs because they're mesmerizing. They're so big. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, he's three weeks out from Masters Nationals where he ends up placing second. He jumps out of his Hummer. And I'm not, no, no shit. And people always ask how crazy he is. He had two shirts on and you could see the veins through his chest, through the shirts. Yeah. That's... And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I'd never seen someone that lean that close in person before. Well, I don't feel like he ever didn't, have that level of like vascular like this off season i feel like it's still most guys like oh, yeah. i feel shredded today kind of look yeah i mean even retired he was that way um, yeah i mean it was just it was he's a different animal he's a different human yeah. and um so we went through three hours of legs and that was like the test right like there was no air condition in s4 and this is the middle of july and I mean, it was, I think in the gym, by the time we finished, it was like up to 106. Nice. Um, and 
to kind of give you guys for who are nerds of training out there, we did leg curls for 40 minutes. Then we squatted for an hour. And then we did a superset of leg press and leg extension. And then we finished with spider bar good mornings. So three hours, four people just like this. And um, I learned a lot of cool lessons that day. Like I'll share a really fun one with you guys. Like, so we watched, we, we worked up to three plates on the spider bar. And then Dave, like, I thought we were done there. I thought we were because three plates on the spider bar wasn't a joke for me at the time. And um, Dave was like, okay, cool. Let's start adding two chains aside until somebody misses. So we just kept rotating. We got up to 12 chains aside. Okay. At eight chains aside, Dave was hitting triples. And I didn't think he was even going to be able to stand up. And in my mind, I was like, I got that motherfucker beat. Because when we got in there and sat down, Dave kind of talked a little bit of shit to my buddy and I because we were small at the time. He was like, y'all ready to be ready for this? And I was like, mm -hmm. just what you'll see. <laughs> Like, so it kind of like made my competitive spirit come alive. And um, so at three, he was hitting sets of three, right? So then he goes in his office, comes back with squat briefs, fully strips down, puts the briefs on with three plates and 12 chains aside. That motherfucker hit 30 reps. Oh my God. I'd never seen someone flip a switch like that in my entire life. Never, not once. Like, I thought I knew what hard training was. And then I watched him do that. He collapsed to the floor threw up in a puke bucket filled with kitty litter for two minutes and then seal walked over to the leg press and said, all right, I'm ready to start now. Uh, it was, <laughs> it was wild, man. And it shit at 23, like I thought I knew what hard training was. And I always tell people like that moment <laughs> still hits right here and right here. Like yeah. I'll tap into that. Cause I watched him go from like, a pretty aggressive dude to literally somebody I was scared of. And it's that time of the man. I I don't remember ever being like physically scared of someone like the look in his eyes was just batshit crazy. So that's why I always kind of chuckle when I hear people tell me they train hard. I'm like, <laughs> man, like that probably did more for my bodybuilding career. That one session with them than anything up to that point. Yeah. So I share that because you asked me to talk about influences and things yeah. like that. So like yeah. that imprinted on me. And when I, I'll never forget going back home, that first session back in the gym, I, I looked around and I, I felt like such a letdown and disappointment because I was like, man, like I would love to thrive in that environment every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyways, like I'll kind of speed up a little bit. No, no, no. After that, I'll, I always tell people like that was my the test, right? Like he wanted to see if I could take it. And like, I, I knew like I, when, when I got, when I got off the phone with my wife right before we got out of the car, I told her, I was like, I'm leaving this place one way. And it's in a fucking body bag or making through the workout. So she was fully prepared, like <laughs> to get a call, like, Hey, that motherfucker blacked out and they're yeah. taken to the hospital. Like, yeah, so I, knew, I didn't know if I'd ever get a chance to train with him again. Right. And I mm -hmm. knew in my heart that he was going to put me to work that day. Cause that's what I asked for, you know? Yeah. And um, so ever since that moment, like, we just started to become friends. And I mean, even though he was still doing my training and things like it was just different. It wasn't like, even though, again, even though I paid him for service, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it was just a different level. And yeah. uh, like, I'd go watch him compete. And every year at the Arnold, like he like, Hey, come to this booth and hang out. And like, we just like sit and chill and talk. And then, you know, he, he would occasionally invite me up for training. And then uh, What's really funny is like I was telling you at the beginning, I, I worked at a giant gold's gym for eight years and uh worked like a madman like you do. And yeah. that's why I respect what you do, like time <laughs> of the day. <laughs> I've lived that life. And um my wife was oh, shit, six months pregnant with our second son. And like I just walked in one Saturday morning. And I was like, I'm done. I'm just done. I can't do this job anymore. I, I'd really go bag groceries at Kroger, then do one more day of chasing sales numbers, right? yeah and uh so i quit and gave a four-week notice with no leads and i came home and it was halloween that i did that actually it's kind of funny so we were going to take our boys trick-or-treat or our older son trick-or-treating and um she said what do you think you're gonna do and i was like i, I don't know i have no clue and i said I'm, i was thinking about reaching out to john to see if he had any opportunities i was like but i just don't know if i'm qualified like what he needs for that right mm -hmm. And um, she's like, what worse can an email do? Like, just email them and say, see, we'll talk to you about it. 
So what's really funny, I'll fast forward a month or two beforehand, before all this happened, my all time bet genetically, most genetically gifted athlete I've ever worked with. Um, she was a natural pro. And then we wanted to transition to the NPC. So she ended up doing the Mike Francois classic, which is one of the biggest shows in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And, um, so John had a couple of really good figure roles in that show as well. So I told Yashika, I was like, listen, you're going to have a good class, but I know in my heart, like you have what it takes. And she'd been training with me five days a week to get to that. And then just, I was killing her with diet. And well, I say killing her. She probably eats more food than most men, but <laughs> yeah. anyways, she goes up there and just destroys the competition and all of John's girls. And he texts me sitting in the audience. He was like, how do you have this really tall girl named Yashika, right? I was like, yeah. And he goes, you just beat both of my girls. <laughs> nice. So it's kind of funny when I reached out to him, that's one of the things that stuck out in his mind. He was like, clearly you know how to get people in shape. Right, yeah. And I said, I, I take a lot of pride in that. Yes, sir. And um, so I did a pretty extensive internship with him for about three months. And um, I, I mean, man, he picked my brain. He He put me to the test. He would like, he would send me the clients that he was doing nutrition for, like send me their questionnaire and say, build a plan. And I'd build it and then he'd send me his and mine and we compare it and then we talk through the notes on the phone. Yeah. And a lot of times, man, it was pretty spot on. <laughs> yeah. But for the most part, like I realized I was still relatively young in terms of online work. I felt like I was really good in person, but he really nurtured how to get because I, I always felt like the I'd worked with a few online clients but in terms of experience I felt like it was small where in person man I had god knows how many hours like so my confidence wasn't incredible I knew I knew what I was doing but just like how I could get people to push right like and I'm sure you've probably experienced that like it's a lot easier to teach someone how to go full throttle in the gym with hands-on as opposed to me talking to them through the internet mm -hmm. oh for sure and like I, I wasn't really, I wasn't great at that yet. So he nurtured the shit out of that for those first three months. And then he just started giving me some clients and he was like, let's see what happens. And man, those first 10 to 15 clients he gave me, I, I don't know if I got lucky. I don't know if the stars aligned, like they got crazy results in 12 to 24 weeks. And he was like, man, I really, I really like what you do. Like, what well, would you think about coming on with me full time? Well, I was still working full time at a physical, that physical therapy company and running that personal training studio. But I knew I couldn't give up that opportunity. So I told my wife, I was like, I'm going to work around the clock. I'm taking this job with John, but I'm not cutting the other two because when I worked at Lucas Therapies, I had, you know, insurance, I had a regular mm -hmm. paycheck, yeah. you know, and with us having a baby, just being born at this point or almost to being born. So I started full time with him in November. He Daxon was born in January. So okay. I had three months and I was like, well, you know, with us having a new baby, I just want to put us in a good spot. So when I was at Gold's man, I made good money. And it wasn't what I was making at Lucas. Yeah. It was way better hours and things. So between the studio and Lucas, I was making a good living, but it wasn't what I was making at Gold's. So I was like, you know what? This will give us a chance to get my money back to where it used to be. <clears throat> and um, so for two years, I worked like a slave. Like I'd get up, I'd do client updates from like four to seven. I'd get, and in the meantime, while I was doing this, I was actually doing a prep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know that, right? You're like, right, yeah, up. why not? Yeah. Why not throw a prep in there, right? And, right. you know, I was in the process of moving up from light heavyweight to heavies. So, I would do that from till seven, do a car cardio, which is the time for me is like roughly 30 minutes. Then I would start work at Lucas at eight, work till lunchtime, go train, go back at Lucas till seven, get off at seven, come home, do client updates till 10, go to sleep, repeat. <laughs> nice. nice. So finally, like once we got to where I, like John and I were killing it together, um, he called me one day and he's like, how much longer are you going to do this freaking circus, man? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I'm talking about why in the world are you working three jobs when I know what you make with me and it's great money. And I was like, I don't know. I guess I'm just scared. And he's like, don't rip the fucking bandaid off and go all in. Yeah. And you know, John doesn't curse a lot. So I said, all right, let me talk it over with Angela, which is my wife. And uh, I texted him back. And I was like, all right, 
I'm in if you are. And he's like, go all in. I'll make you my lead coach. We'll do this thing. Nice. I said, all right, cool. So I gave my notes with Lucas and um, I stepped away from the studio, even though I was still part owner in it. I just removed myself and I was more of like a advisor, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the training staff. And they ended up promoting one of the guys to like the head trainer and stuff. And it, it, it all worked out. Like it was, it was the right time. And uh, yeah. So from there, man, like at that point, him and I were fully bonded. Like it's one of those things, like the first time Mary ever met me, she's like, God, I would think you two were brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and what's really funny is I remember one of the, one of my prep photos he posted once, like this is before I really knew Mary um, and before John's YouTube really got giant to where it is what we all know now. Yeah. Like, I assumed it was his wife, like posted one of my photos. She's like, man, I thought that was John at first. And I was like, I remember what my wife and I were sitting in the movies together and I looked and I showed her and like, you know, you know how women are. They're like, cool. And like, right, I'm over yeah. there like cold sweating, like have chills. Right. I'm like, someone just compared me to my mentor. <laughs> nice. So I, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's really cool. Like to how that has gr had grown to, you know, them inviting me to stay in their home multiple times for, you know, a week or two and, you know, going to Jonathan Alexander's football practice and helping with him, like recruiting. And it, it was such a cool thing because, you know, a lot of people ask me like what he is to me. And like, to me, he, uh, he always felt like my older brother, right? Because we weren't that far separated in age. Like I'm 38. He would have been 50 mm -hmm. 12 years. So it wasn't like he was so much older than me that he was, and he didn't really treat me like he, I was his son, right? He treated me like a little brother, right? Yeah. Do this, do that. Like, and you know, it was very loving, but at the time it had to when he when he had to crack that whip on me, like he was like, Hey, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. Like, so he I always viewed him kind of as my big brother, and I never wanted to let him down. So I'm gonna try to keep it together here <laughs> while I talk about him. Uh but man, yeah, I I miss that dude every day, every day. And I mean, you guys can see him right there looking over my shoulder. Yeah, that's your Angela did that for Christmas for you, yeah. Yes, sir. That I saw that that set up on Facebook this weekend. That's that's a pretty pretty sweet setup. Yeah, and and I mean, I'll be honest with you guys, like it, that still hurts, right? Like it's not easy to deal with because by the last four years of me working with him, like we talked every day, whether that be email phone or text message he wasn't big on text messaging um but yeah it was, it was weird like it was a missing spot because you know i turned to a lot i turned to a lot a lot of times for like advice but not like not just like this bodybuilding stuff like more life and business stuff you know and yeah. like how he carried himself in this community you know he really pushed me to start a youtube channel which i'm glad that i did because of that um and yeah i mean hands down you know if you ask me who really pushed me to be where I am today. It's him. Um, he wasn't, a, he was not an early influence of mine um, because I didn't really get to know him really well until 2010. Yeah. Um, but, and overall, if you ask me right now, today was my last day on earth. I was, I, I credit who I am today to that man. Yeah. No, I mean, he, John, like I, I thought it was kind of, amazing when he passed just like the the number of people that it wasn't like oh he was a great bodybuilder and he was he was you know he had such a great physique it was like holy shit he's just a, an amazing guy uh yeah. like zero negative anything and which is almost impossible like i i could find probably negative stuff about me if i google my name enough you know but it's pretty much impossible to to, to say that about him so i i just exceptional i think is probably like the best word I can tell you this, when, when he passed and, you know, I saw all the social media stuff go off and go crazy about him. Like that, I think that hurt me more than anything because everyone kept saying the bodybuilding world lost such a great person. And, and I realized not everyone knew him to the level I did, but in my mind, I thought the world lost a great man. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Know? Like it wasn't like the bo bodybuilding to me, for him, to me at least was a fraction of what he taught, you know, he taught me leg curl. He taught me banded band stuff, chain stuff, but that to me wasn't as important as 
how he interacted and treated people, right? You know, from someone who was 130 pounds to, to who, someone who was a pro, he treated them all the same. And when, man, when we, when we, when I would see him at like the Arnold Expo and he'd be talking to people, it didn't matter what the person looked like. He would still have a genuine conversation with them. And he, you could mm. tell he cared. It wasn't fake. It wasn't a facade. It, I can't tell me times we'd be an American barbell and somebody would walk up to him and ask him for a picture. And they're like, man, we, I mean, we're getting it. You're covered in sweat. Yeah. He'd smile, shake their hand and ask them a good question. You know? Hey, how's it going? What are you training today? And then he would give them some advice. Hey, why don't you try this? And meanwhile, we just did a triple drop set on uh, dumbbell lunges. Like, <laughs> and, and, and that stuck with me, right? Because, you know, you know how many people, I mean, I'm guilty of this, would have been like, fuck you. <laughs> right, I'm yeah. Dying. Come catch me after the session. No, wasn't him. Yeah. Wasn't him. So, yeah. Yeah. Or the the only time I met John in person was at uh, at the it was a physique summit in uh, oh god it was in Ohio, I, okay. but John Gorman put it on it was 2016 it was the year after I won my pro card and he was there and he didn't recognize me initially but like I I passed him a couple times and I was wearing like Iron Rebel stuff and he's like oh great sweatshirt and stuff and at the end of the weekend I was like well I should probably introduce myself to him because I've been emailing this guy with you for like eight months or something yeah. so I shook his hand he's like oh my god he's like I didn't recognize you because you weren't doing this and then he spun around and he did that like the back pose that I had been sending you guys for like my my one of my pro poses for like six months he's like well you weren't standing like this so you didn't look the same and I, was, <laughs> I laughed because like how not gracefully he spun to try to like hit that very <laughs> fitness model sort of play. It, it and then and the first thing he asked me after that was like how are the kids and I was like you know like it's not you know how was the weekend it was nothing it was just like how are the kids how's your wife doing like a family stuff like first so yeah. um yeah like that that in my not, obviously not anywhere close to the interactions that, that you have but like that's been my experience for sure with him too so yeah uh, i mean i can tell you this the, the best memories i have of him like i always will be nostalgic nostalgic about the training right like but my best times and memories with him will always be like sitting at his kitchen table or riding in one of his cars to the gym and just those conversations like i really you know in hindsight right i wish i would have just like recorded it on my phone right just set my phone up and just record it yeah the gold that he taught me in those moments about life about a man about me running a business a husband or you know a father bodybuilding how to treat clients how to turn people pro like so many or football stuff like just things that i wish i would be able to like look back and reflect on because i would say even though noah caught a good portion of our workouts on camera it was like a third of them Maybe yeah. less, maybe a fourth. And, you know, I, I would always, in the moment, I would always justify it and say, I just want to be here, like present, not thinking about filming and having my phone. I put my phone away. Like, I'd leave it in this car, honestly. Yeah. And in hindsight, I wish I wouldn't have, because in my mind, I thought we had went many more together. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's a fantastic summary I, I can't think of anything better yeah um so no thank you for sharing all that that's that's awesome. pretty fantastic um if you don't mind i want to kind of take things back just a little bit for a few minutes yeah please so before this became something that was professional to you you know and you're just a kid in a weight room is there anything that kind of stands out to you in terms of like people that kind of made you realize like this is actually something that that I can excel at now, whether that be from the, the actual competitive side or from a career side, does anything stand out to you? Yeah, so I'll be honest with you guys. I never felt like I would have been big enough to even be competitive at the NPC level because I grew up skinny my whole life. And um I was always good at lifting weights. Like I could move weight, but I was never like giant. I was always that lean. Like you could tell I trained only if I like, had my shirt off. Right. Mm -hmm. But you, I, I would never say I would have been big enough to be a bodybuilder. Um, so when I was, I played football, which got, that's what got me in the weight room initially. And then, um, one Christmas, my dad bought me a subscription to Bigger, Faster, Stronger. Nice. And there was a picture of David Balson in there, played receiver for the Cardinals. 
and it was him with his shirt off, but with football pants on. And in my mind at the time, he was huge. Now he was a big dude, but I mean, he's not in the bodybuilding world. He you wouldn't consider him big, but very lean cap delts, good chest, you know, good arms. And I thought like, man, that looks really cool. Like, he looks like a superhero. Like I, I think I want to do that. Right. So I studied yeah. everything that was in those magazines and I tried to apply them to the weight room, but for me, like I would get performance increase, but I wouldn't see a lot of size. Now in hindsight, it's probably because I wasn't eating enough. It was not probably, it's definitely because I wasn't eating enough. So then fast forward, I did that for a while. And then my mom and I were walking around Kroger one day and there was a flex magazine with Ronnie Coleman on the cover. I still have it. It's in my basement. I have every muscle magazine I've ever had in a storage container. Um, and it was like eight bucks. And at the time, like, <laughs> not that money was an issue for my family, but my mom was like $8 for a magazine. <laughs> right. Yeah. She's like, no. So from the time we started shopping to the time we finished it to the register, I was still reading it. And she looked at me and she was like, all right, you can, you can have it, put it, put, put it on the cart. So I was like, really? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> so I got home, man. And I studied that thing front to back. Right. Yeah. And like at the time I was still in high school and the guy who I lifted with um, was way bigger than me. He played linebacker. And I was like, Matt, like, man, I got all this cool stuff for us to try. So we would do football lifting, football conditioning. Then we go back in the weight room and do like Marcus rules, chest workout. <laughs> nice. So like, it was super dumb, right? Like, but it is what it is. <laughs> right. When you're, when you're in high school, like th there is no such thing as too dumb. Correct. So like I was beginning to learn and like, I'm telling you every month um, I convinced my dad to buy me a subscription because it was cheaper. Right. So mm -hmm. he was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you like this, like I'll get it for you. So I would take them to school and read them in class. Like probably not the smartest thing, but my grades were decent and I was like, screw it. I'm going to do it. So fast forward into college like I really found bodybuilding and I began I don't know if you ever watched it on bodybuilding.com there was a thing called the fit show and Milos mm -hmm. was on there all the time and it was him just killing people yeah so then it led me down the path of like I my buddy and I subscribed to his website which had a form where he like laid out diets and training and everything that he was doing with all of his pros so I would study that more so than anything I did in college. Like I wanted to know everything and suck it all up. Well, truth be told, like me watching him train people that it made me want to do that. And it got to the point where all my buddies were coming to me for training advice. And cause I'd put on probably, I don't know, 20 ish pounds from yeah. high school to my first two years, through my first two years of college, maybe even a little bit more. And they were like, man, you gotta do. So I was like, maybe I have, and I, maybe I'd like to be a trainer because I didn't know what I wanted to do in college. I, I was getting, I was going to school to get a business degree, which I ended up finishing, but I thought I started to want to train. So my roommate, he was this little skinny Greek kid, right? Maybe 120 pounds. His first year with me, he put on like 32 pounds of straight oh, wow. muscle. Nice. And people are like, what did you do to him? Like he went home and his parents were like, do you have him on steroids? <laughs> and at that, at that time, like I was really naive to the PED side of things. Um, so I was like, no, he's just training with me every day. And we're eating like machines. Cause we had, we would do like three dining hall meals and the meals at our school were, man, they were top shelf because we went to a very high end public uh, private school. Yeah. So they would have like a steak carving station every night. Oh wow! Unlimited chicken breast. It was rice. Like breakfast was like you get as many hard boiled eggs as you wanted. Like so, it was honestly the ultimate bodybuilding setup. So we would go yeah. breakfast in the cafeteria. We do a shake and oatmeal between classes. We have lunch, shake and oats again. Dinner. We go train, and then we come back to our dorm room and and make a pound of ground beef and heat up sweet potatoes in the microwave. Like <laughs> it was a great nice. setup. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and. Listen, even though our macros may not work perfect, like in terms of calorie counting, and I didn't know any of that stuff that I knew now, like I just knew if I ate like that and I was growing and we were getting stronger in the gym, it was working. And like on, I always laugh, like on our back day and our leg day, we'd always order a pizza from Domino's and smash a larger piece at midnight because we thought we needed to replenish our glycogen. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we eat all those meals yeah, yeah, and yeah. then have the pizza on back and leg day, right? So anyways, he had all that success. So I was like, man, like, I think I really want to train people. Like, I think I'm good at this. And so I went to my our um, my academic advisor and said, I want to change majors. And he was like, man, like, you're way too far. At this point, I was halfway through my junior year. And he's like, you need to pretty much restart college. And, you know, I wasn't going to take on that extra two years of school. Like I didn't want to do that. I was right. I was almost, I was ready to start out and like, get working. Right. So yeah. <clears throat> he was like, well, why don't you go talk to our athletic director and see if he has any advice for you. So this dude, I, I, one of the classes I actually had with him, I had racquetball as one of my PE classes. And he was like, Oh God. Yeah. He's like, just come to my office one day. So he said, honestly, man, he's like, finish your business degree. It'll be the best thing for you. And then when you graduate, get your personal trainer license. Uh, certification and he yeah. gave me like nasm and nsca and he said don't mm -hmm. if it's not either of these it's not worth it and he's like they're going to be harder it's going to be a higher price tag mm -hmm. but trust me you won't struggle to get a job i said okay it's some of the best advice he'd ever given me right yeah so for college graduation that's what i asked for and um so my parents got me that for my graduation present and um Man, I'll tell you what, I was lazy with it. I'll be honest. Like I was working when I finished college, I was working full time for my dad who runs a general uh, contracting company. And I was when at the time I thought I was making good money. <laughs> and because I was living at home, didn't have any bills. Right. Yeah. Other, yeah. Uh, other than a cell phone. And um, my dad, it was getting to be winter. So, you know, obviously that slow the that, that business slow, starts to slow down. Right. He's like, you know, I'm not going to have the work for you that you had all uh, all summer and fall don't let me think I wasted my money on that certification for you. So, you know, just out of spite, I was like, you want, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so I went on and I scheduled my certification. That was on like, that was on like a Friday afternoon. I scheduled my certification process on the following Friday. Okay. And I told him, I said, I'm taking off work next week. And he was like, why? And I said, because I'm going to study for this test, treat it like a job and then take the test on Friday and pass it just to show you I, I can do it. And one of my mentors at the time who, who was a trainer was like, there's no way you're going to do that. That takes most people three months. Well, listen here, man. Like, you know me, I'm blaster dust. I would wake up at 5 a.m. I study that thing until it's time to train. I'd train. I'd come home, study until it's, my eyes couldn't function anymore. Pass that motherfucker with like 92% on Friday. And my dad was like, my dad's a hard ass. He was like, okay, great. You're certified. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, well, I guess I got to start applying for some jobs, right? So I just joined this new Golds uh, at like a low rate. So it was like $9.99 a month, but you're in a pre-sale center. So it was like almost like a garage gym until yeah. they opened like the 45,000 square foot facility. So I go in there and, I, and I'm training on, because I'd, I'd cut the gym membership off that I was using before because it was like $65 a month and it was for all like childcare and pool. And yeah, you know, yeah, I didn't need all that. I was sure. 22. <laughs> so I was like golds for nine bucks. Uh, yeah. Sign me up. So the guy they had hired for the uh, lead trainer role had seen me in there and he was like, Hey man, like, are you certified? And he's like, you really know what you're doing. And I was like, well, funny story. I just got certified last Friday. <laughs> he was like, do you want to do an interview? So I did an interview with that Monday. So I got certified on Friday, did an interview on Monday, and he hired me on Tuesday. <laughs> nice. So again, I, I, I'm really, I mean, I'm, I'm spiteful as fuck. So I took, my dad was like, you're either the luckiest motherfucker I've ever met or like the stars just aligned for you. So then fast forward, I started there with him and I hit gold and I went from, they had like four others on staff. I was about, I didn't have any experience, obviously. But I went from no experience to being the most selling trainer they had in the whole country. So just, it, again, like I said, blaster dust, man. Like, because yeah. I'll never forget in my interview, he goes, when do you want to work? And I said, how, how, how long is the gym open? And he was like, 5 a.m. to be closed at 10. I said, I think I'll do like 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. And he's like, There's, you're never going to be able to do that. And I was like, okay. Can I just sign up for that? And he was like, I'll, I'll put, I'll pencil it in. <laughs> well, needless to say, I was there from the time the gym opened to almost the time the gym closed. And 
he was just like, you are ridiculous. And I'm like, I'm, I'm telling you, I have nothing else to do in my life. Like you said, I know I want to make money. And you told me as long as I'm with people, I make money and I don't make money if I'm home. So, yeah. Yeah. So you asked me who my influences are like from a training perspective, it's Milos. Like, yeah. and I had to learn the lesson the hard way that most general population people didn't want to be pushed like that. Right. Yes. Um, because they, they, they ended up joking me. The building manager was always there and he'd always be like, ah, oh, the, the ambulance is here. Chris must have knocked someone out again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and sure enough, like yeah. you know, people would come in there and have not eaten and they think they're like train legs. And like, I give them what I thought like was their money's worth. Instead, it was like way more than they actually needed. So I, I, again, I learned that lesson the hard way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Milos was by far my, the guy I looked to and really em tried to emulate a lot. And that's what drove me to want to be a trainer. In terms of bodybuilding for me, the guys I always looked looked to to be a shining light for me was I always resonated with Branch, right? It was like yeah. hardworking dude viewed as bad genetics, which we all know he doesn't have bad genetics, but viewed in the elite level as bad genetics. Uh, you know, he's always a family man. He was a hard worker. Like, and he didn't really give a fuck about what people thought about him. He was going to do what he loved and no matter what he was going to do it. And, you know, he's in that gritty gym in Metro in Texas. So at that time growing up, like I really valued his work ethic. You know, I didn't train like him, but I respected what he did. And I felt like I learned intensity through him. The guys whose physique I really admired the most was like a young Dexter Jackson. Like, yeah, I remember seeing him and being like, man, like at that time he was, I think he was like just outside of, or just inside of the top 10 at the Olympias. And yeah. I'm always like, why doesn't he place higher? Like he looks incredible. Right. But you know, that's, that's when like Jay and Ronnie were King. And, right. Yeah. You know, and listen, going through college my my roommate and i would watch unbelievable ronnie coleman on whatever we were training so it was back day we'd watch that while we were drinking our inno explode and then <laughs> roll, roll across the street to the gym which our dorm room was like right across the street from the gym so it was like a not even a two minute walk yeah and then we would walk across the street train and then come back and then watch whatever we we're going to do the next day <laughs> so like I, I always joke i burnt that dvd out like <laughs> Nice. Um, so yeah, I, you know, listen, I always love watching Ronnie videos. Like obviously Jay was, was, was huge. Like, and I was kind of rooting for him because he was the underdog, so to speak. But on the other side of that, I always looked at, you know, Tom Platts. Right. And I'm like, man, like we, I'd always think about like looking at those numbers of how he squatted, what he squatted. And that always resonated with me because I was, I was good at squatting and it just came natural and, something I didn't take a lot of practice just from the football world. Like I may have been the strongest in our weight room at squats for reps, but I may not paled in comparison to like what he was doing. And yeah. then when you're watching like Ronnie videos of him with 800 pounds on his back, I'm like, well, fuck, like I'm not sniffing that. Right. So th those guys I think are, have really been my early bodybuilding inspirations. And, you know, I know everyone talks about Arnold and things like that. Like, I never really resonated with Arnold because I tried doing his like twice a week, twice a day training. Yeah. It's really worked for me. And even though like, I remember watching pumping iron and getting motivated and like thought that was a cool environment. I never looked at his physique and thought, man, like if I could look like that, because I always looked at his body and was like, yeah, your legs are undersized. Um, <laughs> which is funny. Right. So, uh, and I can't, I'll post that and catch heat for it, but. It's just the truth. I don't care what he says. Like, yeah, yeah. His hamstrings and quads are awful compared to his upper body. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I would say branch all day long. Like, I, I just love that gritty mindset, right? Like, mm. and, and I always try to emulate that to this day. Like, when I pass things on to clients or when they see me train or come train with me, like, you know, those are the, those are the two guys to this day who I would still love to train with. Like, there aren't many people who I'd say, man, I'd really have to try. I'd love to go train with Milos one day. And I'd love to get in the gym with Branch. Like, yeah. and honestly, I don't care what we would do. Uh, yeah. I would think like legs or back would have to almost be a necessity, but I would still to this day like to get in the gym with them and train. Yeah. Well, if either of them are watching, maybe they can yep. make that happen for you. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> no, this, uh, this, this was awesome, man. 
Um, thanks for coming on. Um, yeah, this this was a blast for me. So hopefully it was a good time for you too. And did you say you had a question about headphones? We can. Oh hit that. God, yeah. So touching on like when you first started lifting and like having actual training partners, I remember you you commented something on social media recently about like phones in the gym, and like it's you know it's helpful for video lifting and and stuff like that, but. I know for me, like if, if I trained at like a, a big commercial gym and everybody had headphones in, I don't think I would have ever made it past spending maybe three, four weeks in that gym. Cause the only reason I got to be anywhere was because people actually helped me out. Like I walked in the gym, I didn't have a fucking clue what I was doing. So, you know, there's three guys in particular, like they essentially mentored me inside the gym. So I'm curious, kind of your perspective on that. Cause I know you, again, you're, you're, sort of like me sometimes where you don't always have a lot of time in the gym. You don't want to have distractions, but also when you're looking at, okay, like, but there are kids who maybe are in that same position where like, they kind of feel more isolated. Like, what are your thoughts on like how, I don't know, I guess, how, how do you strike a middle ground between like now having been in this industry for a long time, sort of being kind of like a de facto mentor when you're in the gym versus like I still need that solidarity and I need that me time like how does that what do you, I don't know what do you what do you think on that all right so here's here's been my evolution so the gym I started out in was like a giant fitness center and it had a good bit of like good lifters in there like and there was one guy in particular who he was a bodybuilder. He was a competitive bodybuilder. And I remember watching him. Like I would always watch him and I would always be like, I don't know if nervous is the right word, but I would always be like, man, I hope he doesn't see me looking at him. Like, but I would study what he would do. And in that gym, everyone had like the fanny pack discman with headphones mm -hmm. that went over your ear. Yeah. So I always, I wanted to be in that in crowd because I wanted to learn from those guys. Like, I was always hoping that one of them would talk to me, <laughs> right? And at that time, like, I was I was really young and naive, but I also knew that, like, I knew how to crank, right? And I knew that with a bar on my back or in the leg press or hack squat or lunging, like, I, I could take that shit to the end. I just knew I could. So they all had headphones on, so I thought that's, that's what you had to do. And so there was one day I was in the gym, and... I had done, I was really studying like a lot of dog crap training. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was a set of widow makers that Dante Trudell talked about, right? So 225 on the bar mm -hmm. and then just squat till you couldn't stand anymore. And I think at the time I was like 19, 18, 19. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I hit like 23 reps with 225, just pumping them like a piston. And I yeah. fell and collapsed into the rack. Nice. And that guy just walked by me going to the water fountain and just went like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all I did. I could have done six more of those sets, right? Yeah. And ever since then, like, I'd see him in the locker room, like, posing and stuff. And from that moment, he would, like, talk, like, not a lot of talking, but just like, hey, what's up? And he, there was one day we were sitting up at the front. He was, like, drinking a coffee sitting at the front desk. And I like scanned my barcode in. He's like, man, that was a hell of a set of squats you had the other day. And we started talking. So he was giving me knowledge. And then just so happened around that same time, um, my manager, I worked for Abercrombie when I was in college. So I, uh, my manager was a monster. I mean, fucking huge. And um, he came to the gym and he was like, he, he, he was like, man, where do you train at? And so I got him a guest pass for a week and he come in there and trained and he was like, man, you, you get after it for legs. So he kind of took me under his wing and just showed me the ropes. Well, when I was with him, I didn't have headphones on because he was teaching me how to lift. Yeah. And so it was one of those weird scenarios where I started out with headphones, but it wasn't with a phone. That was back when iPods were a thing. So yeah. I had like one of those little mini shuffles, right? Yeah. You clip on your waistband or on, no, no, no. Let me try back even more. It's going to date me. It was started with the discman and the fanny pack. Mm -hmm. Then went to the iPod. And then I started training with Mike and he, uh, he taught me bodybuilding. Like he taught me how to eat. He taught me bodybuilding. 
Um, and again, to that day, like, again, he was enormous and he would always, he guided me, right? Like a lot of my buddies were starting to like experiment with ju juice and shit. And he was like, Chris, don't do it. Like, don't. He's like, fight every urge to do that shit. He's like, you're still growing. Don't fuck with it. Yeah. When you max it out, then we can talk. And, um, so again, he guided me and like, I, it's really this weird, it, it, <laughs> I'm very nostalgic. And it's one of those things, like, I remember looking around the gym and looking at all the guys who were way bigger than me and respecting them and be like, man, like, fuck, like, that's impressive. Like, I want to get like that. I want to be like that. Or I want to be better than that, right? And now I feel like there's almost a shift in this, like, gym bodybuilding world or even, like, physique world or whatever you want to call it, where guys like us are looked down on You're like oh that's the biggest dude he's got to use the most drugs right mm -hmm. like he's a dumb fucking meathead like sebum is our god and i'm like oh by the way he takes just as much if not more than we all do like fuck off yeah. like <laughs> um so it, it's a really weird thing because i will tell you this if a young guy comes up to me and asks me a question i will more than answer their question because again like i taught started off with john like that's what i learned from mm -hmm. him yeah. Even though it might not be convenient, or I may be like dying out of breath, or I might say, hey, can you let me finish this set real? Or can you let me, let me get this set in, and then we'll chat. Yeah. More than happy to do that. Because, as you said, it's that Dave Tate motto, right? Live, learn, pass on. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've had so many guys that took me under their wing for free and just guided me in the right direction that I almost feel like I, that's my job to pass that on to the younger generation. But at the same time, like, I can't tell many times like young kids will come to me and be like, they want to know a steroid stack, not training or eating. And yeah, it's such a weird, it's a weird world. I feel like we live in, you know, like they're more obsessed with like timing of trend than, but they haven't taken one step to even close to failure. And I'm like, oh, like, let's pull those reins back. <laughs> yeah. You know, or they haven't even eaten a meal plan for four consecutive days. And they're talking to me about timing a growth hormone or using insulin. I'm like, hold on, yeah. you can't even stay on a meal plan. You're talking to me about insulin? Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. So it's almost one of those things where like, I want to, I'm always glad to help. And you know, that's honestly one of the reasons I started YouTube is because of like, this way I can say, hey, like, just give me your phone number. I'll shoot you the video. Or mm. if you want to see more, here's the short answer. If you want to see an elaborate answer, here's this. Yeah. And I feel like there's so many the great and the bad thing about the internet is there's so much information out there that I can't imagine being a young kid in this environment trying to learn bodybuilding or learn yeah. physique enhancement. Because you hear one guy say progressive overload is a thing. You tell the other person that says you need to train twice a day and do all pump workouts. You're someone else that says you full body workouts are the right way. Like I feel like when we were young, there was only one right way and it was high volume and you do bro split. <laughs> right, yeah. Right? That was it. So I thought, okay, cool. We're going to do chest on Monday, back on Tuesday. We're going to take Wednesday off. We're going to do legs. We're going to do shoulders and do arms. And that's my five days, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Well, I think when we were younger too, I think everyone sort of presents as like, this is something you will do now like forever. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not like you. there was no like 12-week transformations, that sort of stuff. It was, I remember that my first book that I read was Schwarzenegger's Modern Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. He's like, all right. I've been doing this since I was what 14 or something. And at the time he would have been what probably in his forties or something, yep. you know, and now it's just like, you can Google the answer to everything. I think everybody expects they should get the answer and have the results equally as fast, uh, which I'm sure does not help the process at all. Um, and so then they never get their answers from real people, which I'm, again, probably does not help. It's just, again, dudes with the loudest voice on a, uh, bodybuilding forum or on instagram or snapchat or whatever is where they're getting it and it's i don't know people like 60 second digestible sort of stuff you can't have a 10 minute conversation with somebody anymore and so i'm like well actually like everything you know is not right you know here's what i think the problem the major problem is and you touched on it right everyone wants black and white answers so i'll give a really great story here my, my brother's ex-wife like wanted to become a trainer so she was like picking my brain for tons and tons of knowledge. And she, I think she got very frustrated with me because I was like, it depends. Like it was always, it depends. Or mm -hmm. if it's this, it's that. Or, 
I'll give an even better example. A guy asked me on a YouTube video, how many sets should I do for quads? And I'm like, uh, you could give a quick answer and say six, 10, 20. Yeah. But what do those sets look like, right? Right. So normally what I always say to those answers are, well, how many are you doing now? Is it working? Well, if it's working, why change it? Right, yeah. So it's like, it's one of those things where the answer could be what you're doing or it could be, well, what are those, if you do eight sets of quads, what do they look like? Are only two of them work? Only one of them a true set to failure? Or are you taking them all to the death? And then if so, what's your recovery like? Oh, well, Chris, I'm sore for six days. Okay, that's way too much. Let's pull that intensity back or pull the volume right. back. Well, how do I know what to pull it back to? I don't know, subtract two and see what happens. So it's always like, I always struggle with that answer, right? Like yeah. the other day in the gym, somebody came up and said, man, what do you do for traps? I want traps like yours. And I was like, do you want to know how I got them or what I do for them? And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, well, I haven't trained direct trap work in six years. And they're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I haven't touched a dumbbell barbell shrug in six years. I don't do anything for them. Yeah. But here's what I did when they weren't like this. And it's the guy's like face, like said it all. Like, I can't believe you just admitted to me that one. <laughs> Cause I mean, I'll be brutally honest with you. Right. Andrew and I had a great conversation about this is there'll be periods of time of the year where I take calf training completely out of my programming and mm -hmm. put those hard sets of calf towards my back. I know personally for me, my calves won't downside one singular bit. They'll still yeah. be vascular. They'll still be full. They won't grow any. But the moment I add those calves back in and say, let's say I do three sets a week for them, I'll see growth off of them. Yeah. Now, if a young guy came to me and said, Chris, like, what do you do for calves? And I'm always like, oh, I, I scared to even mention that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because... My advice is not the best advice because my calves aren't like yours. Yeah. So again, you know, in terms of spreading the knowledge, I'll, I'll try to give like more of a, what I would consider like a blanket answer that kind of covers all my bases. But like, Hey, like do six sets at the end of chest and do six sets at the end of legs and see what happens. Right. Yeah. And always struggle with that because I think a lot of people want to say, oh, well, what does your diet look like? Or what does your supplement routine look like? Or what is, you know, what do you do for calves? Because your calves are huge and I want to copy that. Well, I mean, that's not the right answer for you, right? right? It's like what you said, like everyone is in a society now that we live in where it's like, well, I want to know the right answer. And I'm like, well, the right answer could be on a spectrum. And then of that spectrum, as your physique evolves, that the, the correct answer may change. Right. And I think that's really hard for young people or people just that are new to lifting or it's hard to wrap their mind around, you know, because let's say I showed them your diet and like, I'm going to, you know, I want to look like Zach. I'm going to copy his diet. I'm going to follow it to the T. It may work for 10 people. It may work for 20 people, but it may not work for a hundred people. Yeah. So it's like, Hey, it's a progression, by the way, we didn't start where we're at. <laughs> right. And yeah. And that's why I always struggle with like, you know, my brother really loves filming those day in the life food videos and people are like, man, I'm following your diet. I'm loving it. And I'm like, is it working? I know you right, love yeah. it, but is it working? And they're like, well, no, I'm just getting fat. And I'm like, too many carbs. Right. Yeah. Pull them back. My carbs didn't used to be 600. It used yeah. to be 400. Yeah. And they're like, oh, because listen, I'm, I'm guilty of that. I remember following Jay Cutler's meal plan because I thought that's what you needed to get huge. Right. Well, when I was 185 pounds, I didn't need 10 to 12 ounces serving of meat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not 260 and yeah. shredded. Yeah. Yeah, I'm also not running eight units of growth. A &P. Right, yeah. Like, yeah. and I didn't know that, but I thought I want to be Jay Cutler. I want to be huge. Like, you know, everyone saw Ronnie make that giant bowl of grits and egg whites. Mm -hmm. I hated grits, so I did it with oats. And instead of cheese, I put peanut butter. Like, and I thought, I'm going to shovel that trough of food down. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. But to kind of circle back to what your question was, I'm always like, that's, that's what I feel like I've been put on this planet to do Yeah, is to help people. And I can't help people by being a fucking asshole and leave my headphones on and saying, get the fuck out of my face. Right. But at the same time, I will be honest and say that inside of four weeks out from a prep, 
I've now tempered it down. I was like, can you just give me 20 minutes? And I promise I will answer every singular question you have. I just need to get through this in this moment. Yeah. And then after I'll explain to him, like, hey man, I'm sorry. I had 60 grams of carbs today. I've done two hours of cardio the past two days and I'm running on empty. Yeah. And it was everything in my power to get through those last six sets. And most people are super cool about it because I'm calm. And I know that sometimes I can come across as like, a little bit more mean and aggressive and like I always have a hood on my headphones on depending upon what gym I'm in. Mm. And, but at the end of the day, like I always try my best. I'm not saying I'm always the greatest at it, but I try my best to be helpful and give people good knowledge or at least tell them like, Hey, this is where I would go to find that. And again, that's something else that John taught me. I don't know if you ever got to experience in that experience that at one of the seminars, but like if he didn't know the answer, he wasn't scared to say, it. I don't know. But I would go look for it here. I'm going to jot your question down and I'll do some research and get back with you. Yeah. And that's a very valuable lesson because, I mean, I think, again, in the social media world that we live in, everyone looks at these experts and the experts, I put that in parentheses, experts think they have to give an answer because they, they feel like they say, I don't know, or I've never seen that. They think that people will view them as an idiot or dumb or unintelligent or not as intelligent as fill in the blank where I mean I'm sure you've experienced this I'm sure you've heard people give like bullshit answers just to make them sound smart and they use a bunch of fancy right. words and like you didn't answer the question you just made yourself sound smart you didn't give the kid or man or woman any good advice where the best advice should have been I don't have a clue I've never experienced that I've never helped someone through it but here's who I would go to or let me reach out to that person to see whether they have any information to offer you Mm. and that is to me just as valuable as giving you the answer you know or yeah. i'm also a big believer in i encourage a lot of young kids to experiment because that's how i learned you know i didn't as when i was young i didn't think like i need to buy a 12-week program from someone follow it to the t i would flip through the flex and md and see workouts and the, my way of learning was Let's try, let's, let's try that back workout on Monday. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And then I'll have takeaways from it and be like, okay, cool. Well, I like this. I didn't like that. This felt great. This felt okay. And then those would stick with me. And I jotted down a notebook like, Hey, I really love and feel dumbbell rows. I like getting eight to 12 rep range. Anything more than that, my biceps take over anything less. I start twisting on my back. Like, I don't know how you are, but like, that's how I learned. Like, Right. Yeah. Get notes. I wasn't a notebook guy in the gym, but what I would do is again, I would come right from the gym, come right home to a notebook and pencil and paper. And I'd jot that workout down and put little hand notes by it. Right. Here's my weights. Here's what felt great. Here's what didn't. And I would like circle and highlight shit. And I still have those notebooks on my shelf here to this day. Like, yeah, which is really funny to look at. Yeah. But, you know, I think so many people are scared to get in the gym and experiment. And, you know, when John introduced me to bands and chains, like I wanted to try that shit on fucking everything. And I'll never forget, I sent him a photo of me rigging up how to do banded line leg curls. So I took a T-stand that you put weight trees on and I put a band that drug it down north to south to yeah. a band that drove it away from you east to west. So you got tension both north and as you start, after it got to here, it would start pulling you this way. Yeah. So, out of the hole it was driving down and and he was like man that was that's really smart and i'm like i don't know i'm just dicking off it took me way too long but i found yeah. it and it works <laughs> yeah yeah so again like i always encourage kids like try shit man like just because such and such pro or trainer says this is the best for biceps if you do it and it feels like shit maybe give it a two or three more tries but then if it still feels bad throw it away yeah you know Cause I think so many people, like, I remember being young and somebody telling me, Chris, you got to do barbell curls to have big ass arms. I said, okay, cool. So I'm going to make it a mission of mine to curl fucking 185. And I did it, but man, did it give me pain through the elbow and all of my forearms for yeah. months. And then one of my buddies said, have you ever tried cable curls? And I was like, yeah, but that's for pussies, man. Like that's the, I was told you want to get big arms, you barbell curl. Right. He's like, just pick up the easy bar on the on the uh, cable and just crank it, crank on it. Give me three sets, of like 20, 15, and 12. I yeah. did that. My biceps were pumped and they were huge, like for me, huge at the time. He's like, what'd you just learn? I'm like, well, I guess I learned that cables work better for me from arms than a damn barbell ever did. He's right, like, yeah, cool. Now go get strong as shit at it. 
Yeah. And <laughs> again, like I know most people hate like the word bro science or whatever, but to me, like that's how I learn. I, a study just confirms what we know. Right. Yeah. Like, as I've said a thousand times, someone doesn't need to write a study to tell me that leg curls feel better before squats. John told me to do it. I tried it. It felt amazing. I got strong. My legs grew. I don't need someone to tell me with a PhD that that's right. Right. Yeah. It confirms it in my mind that yes, it works. And we were right. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah, that's, that's kind of my thought on that. Yeah. I think uh, when we moved into this house, I found some of my old training notebooks that go back to like 2002. And then I could see the weights I was using then, the exercises I was picking then. And I look at some of those workouts, and I'm like, I would never do that shit again. Right. But I was like, well, at least I got the evidence that like this wasn't a good idea. Right. And I mean, again, I always tell people like, I always feel like I learned just as much from screwing up as I did for succeeding. Yeah. Like if it took me screwing up six things to find one that worked and that stuck with me, like that was a win. But again, I think everyone in this day and age where they feel like they want to gain 80 pounds of muscle in a year. They're like, I can't afford to do all those mistakes. Right. So they're like, I need you to tell me what is perfect. And like that to me is where as a coach, I always like kind of grimace. And I'm like, we, we got to, we have to learn your body. You have to learn my style and together we'll formulate a plan that's cohesive. Yeah. And sometimes those people I tend to struggle with is like, well, Chris, my incline barbell press hadn't went up in three weeks. I'm like, okay, why is that? What's your pump like? Well, my pump's enormous. It feels great. Here's a picture of my chest. Here's this three weeks ago. Well, yeah, I can already see more fullness out of it. It's working, but my numbers haven't went up. That's because you have a better connection to it. Right. Working your chest more now as opposed to front delt and triceps. Oh, I never considered that. I'm like, yeah, like you're missing those little details or bodybuilders. If you're a power lifter, I'd say, Oh, we got to get after it. We got to figure something out. Yeah. So it's, it's one of them things. Like, I think that's me being older and wiser. Cause I remember being young and being like, if my strength doesn't go up every week, I'm failing. If my reps aren't going up, if I can't get a better pump, like I, and I remember being that way, young and naive and not realizing that your body has ebbs and flows and mm -hmm. you know sometimes stress can, or slack asleep or, if your mill timing was off, can all dictate that performance and number driven people, yeah. which is why I think progressive overload works great for people who are like this, you know, they have eight to, eight to five job. They eat the same exact same times. Nine times out of 10, they're usually single. <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't have kids. Okay, great. You always train at 6 PM and you're always in the same gym with the same weights with the same machines. And you've always had the exact same number of meals and sleep and your stress is the same. Cool. Keep at it, bro. But yeah. guys like me and you who operate a little bit differently, sometimes, you know, and again, that's something that John taught me is the log book is only one factor of everything we do. And if you live and die by that log book, you'll eventually fail or you'll get an injury. Mm. So, yeah, man, I, mean, I can't tell me times like him and I went to the gym and maybe our weights weren't super impressive, but I could barely move. My pump was so enormous. Yeah. And, and he'd always say like, how are your weights compared to normal? I'm like, well, my, Weights are a little down, but man, I'm pumped. And we go through posing and he's like, yeah, you're pumped. That muscle is full of blood. Yeah. And it's only because like we were doing like a little, he would tweak my form or we would do a new intensity technique that he was playing around with, or he would do a little new variation on like a one arm barbell row, or we'd use a new attachment. And like, it's just those lessons I feel like are so overlooked in today's time, like the minutia of a successful workout again that's what he always told me was does the muscle pumped did we exert a lot of energy and did you go to the end on your work sets if you do that we succeeded today did you not yeah. get injured that was his last part sorry <laughs> yeah, i almost yeah. missed that did you are we injured no we won today on yeah. to tomorrow <laughs> same thing yeah. pump did you make your work sets to the end are you injured bam you answer those three questions successfully we succeeded yeah so yeah yeah nice Awesome. Okay. So I think now that we're going on like a solid hour and 15 here, I think it's probably a good time to, uh, to put a pin in today's conversation. For sure, man. Uh, no, this was awesome. Thanks so much for doing this. Uh, again, I'm going to throw Chris's, uh, YouTube channel details in the, in the description. So you guys can check it out too. 
Um, and then look for a lot of his stuff again, you know, on mountaindogdiet.com uh, for other videos and, and stuff that he's written and find him on social media and all that. And I'll throw that down below as well. Um, Perfect. And then maybe we'll do this again sometime, man. Love it. Thanks, Zach. Awesome. Thanks, dude. If you guys like today's video, make sure you like it and subscribe to our channel for more videos on all things strength training related. Talk to you guys soon.